do 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 That sounded like an intro so they can be applaud. Anyways. <laughs> Kia ora. Hello everybody and welcome back or welcome to my YouTube and knitting podcast. My name is Anna. I am Andy Knits on the tube and also Instagram and I just do a lot of knitting and I like to talk about it. So welcome back to one of my podcasts where I show everything that I've finished, everything that I'm working on, any yarn that I've got, just that kind of stuff. Um, this is supposed to be the March a uh, podcast. It is a bit late. It is like the middle of April now, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So yeah, if you want to see what's been going on, what I've been knitting, just stay tuned. Have a little watch, have a drink, have a knit. I am drinking a beer <laughs> because it's Friday, so why not? Which famous soccer player did the All Blacks meet in Marseille in 2007? I have no clue. Anyways, <laughs> I never know the answers to those questions. Let's get on with the show. First things first, I am wearing my sweater number 14 by my favourite things knitwear. I love this sweater. This is honestly, this is one of the first sweaters, like good sweaters that I made for myself and I'm just obsessed with it. I used Chaska Alpaca Air, which is like this lovely fluffy alpaca yarn and then a strand of mohair and yeah, I love this guy. It is so oversized and like drapey and perfect. And for a first sweater, I'm pretty damn proud of myself. Like the first time I did German short rows, like all knitting in the round, all that kind of thing. Just a great one. I'm happy and you know, I've had it for a few years now and it's still amazing quality. I feel like the alpaca air is very delicate. So it doesn't look, as like nice as it did at the start like it's kind of fouting together slightly and pilling a little bit but I feel like it's kind of the hmm it's kind of what I like about it like very like sloppy and you know like cute with a little mock neck good for the winter it is my I'm currently wearing my what I like to call my pajama chic outfit which is just turtleneck, pistrazzi, and then my linen pants, which basically look like pajama pants. And it somehow is suitable enough for work, but it also is just like incredibly comfortable. So I don't have to be uncomfortable at work. And so that is my, what I am wearing today. I guess also, if people do like sewing, what I am wearing as well, Underneath is the, oh golly, it is a pattern by Cool Stitches, I know that, I can't remember exactly, but it is her mock neck pattern. I'm not going to show you what it looks like underneath because it is white and I'm not wearing a bra, but it is a long sleeved turtleneck and it has some really cool like panelling around the bust area, just trust me, okay. And... I really like Cool Stitch's sewing patterns and her knitting patterns and she also has the option to pay however much you want which I think is amazing because someone like me especially last year I didn't have that much money and be able to create and not have to spend too much money on it was really good especially when I was getting into sewing because everything just seems so expensive at the beginning because you have to buy so much stuff so yeah, I'm wearing two new made pieces this week. So now let's get on to the finished pieces for the month of March. 
the first one is an oldie but also a goodie because this is the second time that I have knitted this piece and this is my Ingrid sweater by Patina. Let me just make it look presentable. Dress it for you. Oh, I'm a happy girl, man. So this is how it's looking. I knit this using Pia Gint in the grey shade. And yes, if you didn't know, well, I will tell you now, this is the, first, the second time I've made this. I knitted this probably a year ago, last year. Um, I knitted it like to the pattern, everything. I did do it last time in a crew neck version like that instead of the turtle neck. Finished it and I didn't really wear it too much. Um, I was really not happy with it. Like it was, I've learned now that I am a really tight knitter, so I do need to size up my needles whenever I do anything. Like I don't even bother gauge swatching, I know. I have to size up my needles. And this was one of the ones where I didn't do that and I just used the recommended 4mm needles and it was so small, it wasn't like an oversized slouchy fit that I wanted and that everyone else's looked like. And it was just really tight like all of the stitching like something like this but was really rigid um and it didn't drape nicely so i made the executive decision last year to completely unravel it and re-knit it again if i think i did 4.5 millimeter needles instead of four millimeter needles this time and let me tell you it has made such a bloody difference like it is so much nicer now even my mom because i just went home for easter was like oh it looks like it looked incredible last time because she was shocked when i made it she was like this time it looks so much better like, you can tell like it's just so flowy and even things like the sleeves were quite like nothing like this like baggy that were quite tight around my arms so even if I wanted to wear like a t-shirt underneath it felt a bit uncomfortable and they only went to like here or like here so when you put stuff on it didn't really slouch and then if you pulled your arms up it got even shorter and it looked weird these guys huge huge and long and just what I want right now and perfect because it is almost winter here in Aotearoa so I am a happy girl <laughs> now that I have my Ingram sweater back and a sweater that I now would totally wear way more and then I also decided to go for the proper neckline this time mainly because I do plan on knitting a grey like crew neck sweater so I thought the turtleneck version would make it better and I am really enjoying the turtleneck version I think it's not too turtlenecky it's not too aggressive which I kind of like I don't think I enjoy that aggressive of a turtleneck but yeah needless to say if you have been thinking about making this sweater do it for the compliments alone <laughs> let me tell you now I've had this finished for like two weeks. I haven't even blocked it yet, by the way, and it's like looking so much better than my last one. Um, but I've had this for two weeks and I've worn it to work. I work at a yarn store um, a few times and just the compliments. I love being called a clever when it comes to knitting, like knitting people calling me clever. Wonderful. I love it. And then my mum, even better, great compliment. My mum's sister, who is also an amazing like knitter sewer, great compliment. And then all of my other aunties and at Easter, I was just having a like breathing in it, basking in it, <laughs> like loving everybody, being like, oh my god, I love that jersey. Except for my one auntie who tried to steal it at the end of the night and also tried to pay me to make one. And I really, you know, I swiftly told her to fuck off <laughs> in a nice way. 
earning I swear but no I am not making this sweater ever again two times was enough I talk so fast and I apologize but you might not realize because I do slow down my videos <laughs> whoops all right the second thing I finished where is it away <laughs> the second thing I finished because it has been really cold here in Dunedin Otipote I made a hat this is the weekend hat also by Petite Net I'm sorry I really am but also not because I love her patterns but this is how it looks I love this hat I used one strand of the pardon me the touch yarns possum silk merino yarn which amazing and then just a random strand of white full ply yarn however you can kind of tell in this lighting and on the camera I just bring it in a little bit closer I used two different whites <laughs> so this one is more of like a creamy white and this one is more of like a stark white white so when you hold them up together in ball version they look basically similar but I wanted to use any all the things in my stash I didn't want to buy just another ball of random white wool so I had to re when I ran out of this one had to start using this one and you can kind of tell but the color change is like hidden in the folds which is good so it's just like the brim of the head is a certain color than this one but I love it I don't care I have needed an excuse to use this random hank of touch yarns possum yarn because I've had it for so long I just bought one hank one day because it's like 40 bucks I'm not buying more than one to try it out because I wanted to try possum yarn and when I saw the Tina post I think she made a child version in the green and white I knew exactly what I was going to make with that possum yarn and I'm really happy with this I am going through a green phase like a bright green phase last year was my like sage green dusty artichoke phase we're now at the statement green phase like green green and I'm really happy with it and it's been very cold here so I'm happy I have another hat to add to my collection because I love hats also I think this pattern was really nice I love yeah so you can kind of see <laughs> it looks so yellow on the camera but I swear it's not yellow in person it's white um but the, she does like double knitting around where you do the folds and it just makes it fold so perfectly which is nice so it doesn't unravel at all I love doing this with my hats just chilling and going like this but yeah I think it's a very cute hat and one that I am excited to wear when it gets colder because I am a beanie girl but I'm also an overheater I don't know not the right I'm not too I don't get too cold and normally you know I walk to work in the morning so in the winter it gets cold but walking I heat up so I get to work and I'm like sweating so that so I need to wear like make sure I always wear like a singlet because I get there and I'm like oh my god it's too hot so beanies love for when I get outside in the cold and I'm not walking around walking too hot just far too hot um is that all no no it's not hold on How 
how could I forget the best thing that I finished of all of March? You can see my washing. That's really bad. I don't want to show off my dirty washing. <laughs> So, the best thing that I finished in March is, oh, it's wrinkled, I'm sorry, my Dahlia skirt. Me. This is how it's looking. This is the Dahlia skirt by yours truly, me, Andy Nuts. Hello. Um, this is a new knitting pattern that is currently being tested and should be out around the end of May, hopefully. We'll see how we go. I'm back, I have my breath back. <laughs> so the Dahlia skirt is just a lovely, like midi length skirt with the cutest little lace eyelet design all the way throughout the skirt. And then a little, pick an edge at the very end and I'll show you more of a photo here of what it actually looks like on compared to me just like holding it up like this you can't see the real deal but I am so happy with how the skirt turned out and I'm already making a mini version <laughs> well I want to make a mini version it's gonna be so cute but I used um, I think nine balls of the Spotlight Flinders cotton and it's just a double knit eight ply cotton yarn. I feel like I have t I have one more because I bought ten. I think I might add on the tenth one just because I don't know what I'm going to do with a random ball of black cotton. And yeah, I love it. I think this is so cute. It's such a fun skirt. It looks so cute. You can dress her up, you can dress her down. I am going to be dressing her up next week when I go to the 1975 because you know I will be wearing my Doc Martens, I will be wearing my leather jacket, I will be blending in with the masses, I will be hoping that Maddie Healy brings me on stage and kisses me. It's just the deal, it's just what we gotta do. but i have been so happy seeing everyone's versions that are testing at the moment there have been some really cool colors mine's just black <laughs> i'm just so i'm a very basic girl neutrals black i get it from my mother she also just bought black black yarn to make the skirt so I don't know who's copying who. Is she copying me or am I copying her? We will never know. But yeah, hopefully stay tuned. End of May, this should be out. And then I really want to make a mini version. <coughs> Pardon me. But I want that to be in like full ply fingery white yarn, like thinner. So it's going to take a bit longer, because this already took me like three months. So how do we think a thin skirt is going to take me a while? Just give me time, okay? Please. And that are all the pieces that I finished for the month of March. And yeah, I finished all of them in March. I haven't finished any in April yet. There's some good piece, like, I'm so happy that I finished my Ingrid sweater in the end. My lord. We're never doing that again. Alrighty. <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat, I'm sorry. Now, to show my whips, my works in progress. You one of the many whip bags that I own. I have so many. <laughs> the first work in progress I have is my movie slipover. It's gonna be a bit hard to show, 
because it's down here. Oh no, it comes up perfectly. Wonderful. This is how it's currently looking. I have just joined in the round with it. So we've got a lot of round and rounding to go. But this is how it looks. I'm really happy with how this one is turning out. However, I'm a bit apprehensive on the size because this is supposed to be done on 3.5 millimeter needles however I know now and I'm knitting it on four millimeter needles but I'm pretty sure I'm doing a really large size like an extra large this doesn't feel like an extra <laughs> this doesn't feel like an extra large to me so hopefully it blocks out a bit because I wanted it to be oversized. But it's not really giving oversized, it's giving... Well, I was knitting this one day at work and a customer asked me if I was knitting a child's jumper. So that really rings... Hmm, that, I don't know the words. I'm supposed to be saying but it gives a good not a good vibe <laughs> to the size that I want but maybe it might block out I don't know we will see I will still continue going as I am but I'm just using one of my fave combinations drops flora and drops kid silk in the charcoal gray shades i have unraveled it all from another project that i was doing that i wasn't liking and yeah i was like i'll do the moby slipover why not i don't have enough slipovers that's a lie but i like slipovers so how many have i got one two have i only got three I can definitely do with four slipovers then. Three is not enough. <laughs> oh yeah, four slipovers, fine. Maybe five. Maybe six. Will you allow me to have six slipovers? Because I would love six slipovers. <laughs> All right. Next on the project, continuing on with the Anna Loves Green phase, we have my... What the fuck are you called? Agnet. 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 I'm sorry if I pronounce everything wrong, but my incredibly southern New Zealand accent is Agnet, okay? <laughs> and I'm not changing that. This is how she is looking. The body is completed. And one sleeve is done. And then I run out of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of annoying because I thought I bought the correct amount but I obviously didn't but yeah I am so happy that I finally finished the body of this guy this body was an absolute slog it just took so long and it killed me but I think the only reason that kept me like going is having the buttonholes to do so like instead of there being no buttonholes and I would just have to knit and brioche for this entire long time knowing that like oh I could just knit eight centimeters and then do a buttonhole like put it into phases which was really good and then I got to the ribbing at the end and I just felt like it grew so quickly because it's ribbing and you're not having to work two rows to make one row you're just doing rows and it went so quickly the sleeve kind of took a long time because I had to use DPMs because I was using my 3.5 millimeter circular needles for something else and I don't know if I'm about the DPM life like for socks yeah i feel like bigger projects i don't know mainly because i normally have a bracelet on this end which is like kind of baggy and 
the needle always just got caught in there <laughs> when I was like holding it it would just get stuck in my bracelet and it was really annoying <laughs> so but once again like having the decreases let me show like having steps you know like every so amount of rows I would decrease and I think the decreases look so nice and professional same as the increases on the oh god i'm lost on the back yoke i think they look so lovely but yeah i'm excited to do this one i just have to wait for my yarn to come through which i am using tempe Gint by sandus garn and then a random cone of green mohair that i found on facebook <laughs> which has honestly been amazing and I'm gonna have quite a lot of it left so I don't know what to do with it but yeah I refuse I refuse to try this on until it's blocked and done because I feel like I know that brioche changes a lot when blocking so I in my heart if I try it on and it's not blocked I'm just gonna hate how it looks and so I just want it to be done I want to block it and I want to love it and cherish it and wear it everywhere and maybe bury myself in it I think I'll look cute but yeah this is this year is the year of color <laughs> I say after finishing a gray jersey and a black skirt but I promise <laughs> I will knit more colour this year because this is gorgeous. I love this colour. I need more colour in my life. I'm a beige girl. I like beige, okay? Just let me be. But like some colour. We'll get some more in this year. I swear. Yeah. Another thing that I have been making at the moment is... Oh look, it's all like, the balls is just stuffed perfectly in there. This looks lovely. I feel like I'll just show it to you like this then. This is the Mood Beanie by, I practiced this. I had a lovely Danish lady at work who spectacular, oh fuck, spectacular streak. Yes? anyone's from Denmark please tell me if that's right but we were going over a spectacular streak the mood beanie this is so fucking cute <laughs> I love the little smiley faces I think it's just the cutest thing in the world I basically for, ooh, doo -doo -doo, I had to do a color work it's getting dark. Let me bring some light in. Yeah, sure. I had to do a colour work like beanie and mitten set to show off some yarn at my work. So, and that was my first time trying colour work like Fair Isle. So, like colour work, and I wanted to do it like one hand continental and one hand. English and I felt like I did pretty okay with it so then I was like okay we need to keep going with color work because my ideal project that I really want to do in color work is I'm gonna show a photo here it's a cardigan by Samus Garn but I feel like it's a very typical like Norwegian fair hour cardigan and it's like all knit in the round and then steaked and it just looks stunning. I think it's also the colour that's like making me so excited. But I want it so bad. However, I'm not that good at colour work. So I want to be more efficient at it. Especially more efficient in continental, kn continental knitting. Because I'm not that good at it yet. I can do it, but I'm pretty slow. <laughs> and I don't think my tension is as the similar to my English style so we're just doing little things at the moment to practice so the mood 
beanie was perfect. I feel like I've always been looking at this but kind of just checked out the pattern online and was like what yarn is this because you know sometimes Danish or like Norwegian knitting there's just they use some time there <laughs> sorry Danish or Norwegian like pattern designers just sometimes use wool that I can definitely just not get here in New Zealand and like combinations that are so hard to replicate However, I looked at the yarn and the meterage and I was like, we have something exactly like that at work. It's like a blown yarn DK way and it had the exact same meterage. I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to use that. And it had basically the same colours. So this is the Cruci Brackenvale Veil yarn in the rust and just the taupe colour. Apparently I only need one of each, which I think is amazing, and it's working perfectly. I really like this yarn. It's so soft and fluffy, and it's cute, and I love using more yarn that I have at my work because then I actually can talk to my customers about it. Like, <laughs> I've been knitting this at work every day, and some people have come in and like looked at this yarn on the shelf and have been like have you got any of this like knitted up at all i'd love to see it and i just had to be like yes i do i'm doing it right now and it's so cool to be able to do that be like hi whereas every other time there are that people ask me like oh like where did you get this yarn from and i'm like mm, it's knitting for all of <laughs> like we're in santa scar and like nothing from in the shop so yeah this is how we're looking I feel like my tension is looking all right and my the floats are looking all good I just I'm pretty slow with it you know we're taking our time it's a slow methodical hat but it's a cute one and it will be perfect for winter so we love her we love her we cherish her it's not gonna balance is it this is how it looks. Just to give you an idea. <laughs> Wee! Alright, yeah. And my last whip at the moment is also. Ooh, we're really close. <laughs> Alright. My last whip at the moment is also a yarn acquisition. So, this yarn has actually been gifted to me for a test knit. So it was gifted by the lovely Maria Orlin Knit... Oh god. Again, I'm so bad at pronouncing. In my mind, in Kiwi accent, I would just really want to say like Ullen, U-L-L-E-N, U-N, but that's not Orlin. Orlin? I don't know. Um, yeah. Orlin Knitwear Maria. <laughs> I'm just speaking so much gibberish. Lizzie, you know what? Never mind, you're not allowed to say it. <laughs> Again, terrible pronunciations. Hold your ears. Again, I just really want to say Isagur. Isagur? Isaye? Isaye? I don't know. But it is the Eco Baby yarn, which is 68% baby alpaca and 32% organic cotton. 50 grams equals squiggly line 150 meters. Hand wash cool, lay flat to dry. Yarn. And I am test knitting the cloud bralette for her. This is how far we've gotten at the moment. It doesn't really look like a bralette, but it will, I promise. But this is how the bralette should, will look. And in the next podcast, I will show you that. However, we've only gotten this far. This is the band for underneath. And I'm really excited. I love the idea of a knitted bralette. However, some of the ones, like the naked knit and some other pattern people, I feel like I never really see bigger boobied people wearing them so i don't really want to buy the patterns and give it a go because i don't know what it looks like however 
I really like Maria and her pattern looks nice because it's a bit bigger and she really wanted to, I mean, big, big, big thicker yarn. And she really wanted to have people with bigger boobs test it out. So I thought, why not? Because it's gifted yarn and I'm only wasting my time. And I have so much time to spare. It's fine. <laughs> but this is how far we have gotten. The yarn took so long to arrive. Are we surprised? No. It's on the other side. I'm on the other side of the fucking world. So I feel really stressed because some people have already finished the test knit and I just got on my yarn. Like it's been a month. But we are frantically knitting. We will get there. This is how it's currently looking at the moment. Nothing else really going on with it. But yeah, thank you so much to Maria for choosing me for this test knit and gifting me yarn. I feel very happy. I love free things. <laughs> it can be anything, but yeah, getting some gorgeous yarn and being able to try a pattern from a lovely designer always makes me really happy. So yeah, that was my first yarn acquisition. My second one is one that ever since it came out, I have been really wanting to try it. I got it yesterday in the mail and I like started swatching immediately and it is the Tweed Piergant and the, I think this is the Tutti Frutti one. I get this from my babe Clementine Knit Shop in New Zealand if you are wanting Santa Scarn. She has a huge ass range and I love buying it and it comes in like a day because she lives in Monica. But yeah, I have a pattern idea in mind for this. I used to own, well I made it like years and years ago. So I used to have like a bright yellow acrylic sweater that had some cables on it and I really liked it. However, I was a shit net I was a shit net back then. <laughs> um and i feel like it could be better and so i got rid of that sweater i sold it and now i really want to make one my version like not flat and this is flat and sewn together like knitting around better techniques probably different cables that kind of thing so stay tuned in the next podcast hopefully we have something made that is a sweater which i know that y'all in the northern hemisphere won't be wanting to wear right now because it's going into summer but it's cold here <laughs> I'm not cold and it's winter so I will be making winter wears oh. so that was all for this month I feel like that bear has really made me talkative so lucky you you get talkative me <laughs> But that was all of the things that I've made, have been making, and yarn that I got this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, and yeah, give this video a like if you did. S subscribe if you want to see more things. I swear I'll film more stuff. I sometimes lose the motivation, and especially since it's getting colder now. I don't really do much. I kind of just go to work, I come home, and then I knit. But I'm going to Wellington next week to go to the 1975. So I'm very excited for that because I actually will be doing something. <laughs> and I have been tasked with taking a million photos for Alexandra. Alexandra's gone, which is going to be a struggle for me because I'm probably going to be wasted. But I will take a lot of photos, I swear. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching. I shall see you next time. Tally ho.